that's a promise we can all stand on. We've been born again, amen. And one day we will see Jesus face to face, amen. What a promise he's given us all. Great to see you in the house of the Lord tonight, amen. Good to see some that have been able to uh, be back with us that hasn't been in a while. Good to see you tonight. Good to see all our regular folk, amen. I'm glad God lets us be together, amen, like he does. Amen. If you have your Bibles tonight, Romans chapter 10 tonight. Romans chapter 10. <clears throat> Romans chapter 10. The Bible says in verse number 1, it says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. I don't know about you tonight, but my prayer is for all my family that I love, all my friends that I know, all the people that I come across is for them to be saved. Amen. I, I want someone that I come in contact with to know that they can be saved. And the, the way they can be saved is one way and one way only, and it's by the shed blood of Jesus Christ and believing in that work that, was, that he done and he finished and he accomplished on Calvary. Amen. And we're going to read a little bit more right here in this, in this chapter, so just keep your Bibles open tonight in Romans chapter 10. And I want to say something. Do you remember when you got saved? Do you remember? I mean, can you go right now in your mind's eye to that place of salvation? Amen. Can you go right now in your mind? You know exactly where you was at. And you might not know the date on the calendar or the time on the clock, but you can go to the place when you received salvation. Amen. When you met Jesus Christ. Hey, when you know your name got written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That time that you repented of your sin because you knew you were a sinner, you acknowledged that Jesus Christ was the only way and you really got saved. Amen. You remember that time. If you remember that time, amen, hey, you can tell everyone I remember that place where I got saved. I, I know where mine was, amen. Matter of fact, the place of carpet that I kneeled on, I still have it, amen, in my shop. I mean, it don't, it don't mean a whole lot. It's just a piece of carpet to most people, but it's Calvary to me, amen. And I'm going to keep it to the day I die, amen, and because it's, it was Calvary to me. Let's pray tonight. Father, we love you and we thank you, Lord, that you're with us. And we thank you, God, for a place of salvation that we can come and, 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 and meet you, God, for the first time and, and live our lives for you and then uh, 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 forever be with you, oh God, in heaven. One day, one day we will, God. Uh, Lord, I've never seen you. I, I, I've never a uh, 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 witness to things that you've done on this earth. But God, I believe it with faith tonight that you are God. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And you are one who is mighty to save anyone that calls on, his, on your name. And Lord, I pray tonight that you'll bless tonight uh, in this service. And God, if there is one lost, God, I pray they'll be saved tonight in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, <coughs> Whew, Amen. Thank you, Lord. I, I'm so glad tonight I remember my place of salvation. Amen. And tonight as we read verse 1, uh, uh, Paul says, it, it, it's my desire, it's my heart's desire, and it's my prayer that everyone be saved. I'm glad somebody prayed for me, amen. And, and tonight I want to I speak that just for a minute, that place of salvation, amen. Amen, the place of salvation. Uh, in the Bible we can see, uh, and it's clearly taught throughout Scripture, especially the New Testament, that you're either lost or you're saved, Amen. Hey, y'all know what I'm talking about tonight. Hey, there's only, there's only two cases. There's lost people and there's saved people. Uh, you might not be right with God, but if, if you're saved and you're backslid, you need to get where you need to be. And if you ain't ever been saved, you're lost tonight. That's all there is to it. Uh, you might have religion, but you're not saved tonight. And tonight I want to tell you there is a place of salvation. Amen. There is a place of salvation. I pray this scripture tonight will come off the page and we'll see that place of salvation. Hey, let, let, let me bring it. Let me tell us the story before I start. You know, y'all remember the Titanic? The story of it anyway. <clears throat> and you know that the ship hit the iceberg and it went down. Did you know there was people on that ship that was millionaires? 
and that got first class tickets on that thing. Then there were people on it that was about, they were second class, if you will. They didn't have a whole lot of money, but they didn't have to be down there in the lower class, in the, in, in the steerage of the ship, in, in, the, in the loud part of the ship, in the uncomfortable part of the ship. They were poor people that could get tickets and get on the Titanic. There was classes of people, but when that thing hit that iceberg and, and went down that night into the cold sea, hey, they, they, the New York finally got the grand tally of the people that was on that ship, and it did not say first-class person, second-class person, or third-class. It said that uh, it gave the ones that were lost and the ones that were saved on it. It didn't matter what class you were. It was lost or saved. And tonight, this scripture is going to show us there's a place of salvation, and tonight you're either lost or you're saved. It don't matter what room they were in on the ship. It mattered if they got on the lifeboat. It didn't matter the room that they bought. It mattered to what if they got on the lifeboat, if they were lost or if they were saved. Amen. Let's look at verse 1 through 3 here in your Bibles. It says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God is for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. They, 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 they got a zeal for God. I, I like people with zeal for God. Amen. I tell you, I don't like a stump on the log, mention God, and they say, yeah. No, no, I like somebody that's got a little bit of zeal. Amen. A little, a little bit excited that they're saved. Amen. And it says they had a zeal for God, but they didn't know him. Man, that would be a bad place to be, be excited about God, don't even know him. Let's read on down what it says, verse 3. And for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of of God, amen, that's what we see here, we see these people, Israel, amen, hey, they, they, they were righteous in their own eyes is what they were, and they didn't know the righteousness of God, in other words, uh, them scribes and the Pharisees, remember them, they were against Jesus Christ, uh, they wasn't for him, uh, because they knew God, uh, they thought in their minds, and they thought if they kept the law and were good, that they, they could get to heaven, See, and, and, the, and, and the odd thing is, and, and you might say, well, I don't know nobody like that. I know a lot of people like that that think they're good and they're going to get to heaven. I want to say according to the scripture we just read, amen, this is point number one. Hey, good won't get you there. Uh, what, where, where's there? That place of salvation, good won't get you there. Amen. Hey, write that down in your Bibles. Write it down right here in the, on this page. Hey, that's something that you ought to remember. Good won't get us there. Amen. Hey, you ask people if they're on their way to heaven, they say, well, I've been trying to be good. Good won't get you there. Good will not get you there. It won't get us to heaven. Amen. They'll say, well, I don't rob banks. I, I ain't never killed nobody. Huh? Hey, I like the way of the master the way they do. I like the way they bring out things. He, sa he says, oh, well, according to the Ten Commandments, ha ha have you ever stole anything? Answer that yourself. Have you ever stole anything? Yes, that's your answer. Amen. If you don't know that answer, let me give it to you. Write it down in the blank. Yes, you stole something. Amen. What, what do you call people that steal? Huh? Have you ever told a lie? Yeah. What do you call people that, that, that tell lies? Huh? Have you ever looked on another, the opposite sex with lust? You, you ain't looking up at me. The answer for you is yes. Huh? Am I being right? Am I true? Even my older sweet people, am I telling the truth? Is your answer yes tonight? Huh? If you ever took the name of the Lord in vain, so by all of us, here's the way of the master, by all, just four of the Ten Commandments, we're lying, thieving, uh, 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 blaspheme, adulterous at heart is what we are. Huh? We're not going to make it in on good works is what I'm trying to say. We're not going to make it in. Hey, amen. Hey, no one is good enough to get to heaven. No one's good enough and you're not going to do good enough to get there. Hey, hey, come into church. Y'all know I'm for church. Oh, y'all know I don't like to miss church. Coming to church ain't going to get you to heaven. Uh, being a member of Evergreen Free Will Baptist Church won't get you there. Hey, it won't get you there. Good, good won't get you there is what I'm trying to say. Hey, religious acts 
keeps you from real salvation. Religious acts, trying to do good, will keep you from salvation. Can I say something? These people were trying to keep the laws. <clears throat> and the law demands perfection. It demands it. But Christ gives it. <laughs> we can't do good to go to heaven. We can just receive Jesus Christ. That place of salvation, hey, you can't do good to get there. I remember the story. I'm going to move on. I know we got to meet tonight. Hey, I'm going to move on. But I remember the story there uh, uh, that they used to tell about the, the man who went to the doctor. And he said, and he went to the doctor, and the doctor's name was Law. Huh? He went to Dr. Law. Y'all ever heard that? He walked in there and he told him, he says, hey, Dr. Law, he, he says, something's wrong with me. I, I, I need help. Something's wrong with me. And Dr. Law looked at him and said, I know what's wrong with you. It's your heart. And the man said, no, it can't be my heart. It's my eyes. It's my eyes. I've been looking at stuff on the Internet I shouldn't be looking at. And I believe it's my eyes, doctor. The doctor says, no, I'm the, I'm the doctor and it's your heart. He said, no, I don't think it's my heart. I think it may be my hands because my hands has been wanting to pick up stuff I shouldn't pick up and, and grab a hold of things I should He said, no, it ain't your hands. It's your heart. He said, no, I, I think it might, doc, I really, I think it might be feet. My feet, my feet been carrying me places I know I should not go. And the doctor said, listen to me, it's not your feet. It's your heart. He said, maybe it's my mouth, Doc. I've been putting things in it I shouldn't be putting in it. I've been letting things come out of it that shouldn't come out of it. And the doctor said, listen to me. It's your heart. He said, you really think it's my heart? And Dr. Law said, yeah. He said, can you help me? He said, no, I'm just the one who points out your problem. I can't help you. He said, well, who can help me? He said, well, he's right across the hallway. That's Dr. Grace. Amen. Hey, he went over there to Dr. Grace, and he said, Dr. Law said I had a heart problem. And Dr. Grace said, yeah, I can fix you right now. Hey, if you'll lay down on the table, I can take out that old heart you got, and I can put you in a brand new heart. Amen. Hey, and the man said he laid there on the table, and he, 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 he never busted him open, but he pulled out his heart, and he looked at a black beating, nasty, stinking, dirty heart, and, and, and Dr. Grace would take a brand new, beautiful, righteous heart and put it in it. Doing good won't get us there. Doing good don't get you there. Good don't get you there. Look at verse 6 now. Look at verse 6, what it says. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend to heaven, that is, to bring Christ down from above? Look at verse 7. Or who shall descend into the deep, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead? Hey, hey, he's saying here, he said, good won't get you there. And then here he's saying, which one of you, which one of you can go up to heaven? And we know we need a Savior. Who can go up to heaven and bring Christ down? Nobody. Who, who, if you could bring Christ down, crucify him, put him in the grave, which one of you can go down into the pit of hell and pull him out? Nobody can. Amen. Hey, in other words, you can't do it. You can't do it. Hey, doing good don't get you there. And we see that the deed was done here. Amen. We see that we can't go to heaven and pull him down. And if we did and he, and he, and he put him in the grave, we couldn't pull him back out. Are y'all with me? Huh? Hey, but the deed for salvation, that place, was done here. Good, hey, hey, a, a good won't get us there because the deed was done here. The deed was done here on earth. It ain't making sense, is it? Hey, the deed, Christ come down to us is what I'm trying to say. Huh? Simple as it could get tonight, I know, but the deed was done here. God could have made a way in heaven, but he didn't. He decided. He decided to write something like, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Huh? Hey, 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 God in the fullness of time sent forth his son to this world. Amen. We have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity, but in all points was tempted like you and I, Amen. yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace and to help in the time of need. What I'm trying to say is he came down here and the deed for salvation, the work for salvation was done here. I'm trying to talk about a place of salvation. Hey, doing good won't get us there because the deed was done here. The deed was done here. Huh? Hey. He died on Calvary. 
Hey, he was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, done many signs, miracles, and wonders. Uh, would tow the cross up the Via Della Rosa. Hey, would die on a place called Golgotha. Hey, they put him in a borrowed tomb. Hey, on day three, he rose again. When he was on that cross, you know what they said? It is finished. What did, hey, the work of salvation, the deed was done here. Whew. It's the place of salvation is what I'm talking about. Good won't get you there. Because the deed was done here. Brother Brian, am I making any kind of sense? I feel like some people's left me. It's the place of salvation. It's the place of salvation. Everything in our life points to Jesus Christ. Because he was it was done here. Hey, we got thank we got we got scripture after scripture after scripture uh, wrote about a place called heaven. We ain't got no idea what it's about. That's right. But we know all about, huh? I, come on, Brother Norm. Hey, but we know all about Jesus Christ because we just celebrated Christmas. Huh? Ain't about the jolly fella. It's about the Christ. Amen. Huh? Fixing to go into the Easter season. Amen. It's about a resurrected That's Savior. Right. Mom and Dad, it's about a resurrected Savior. Why do we know all these things? Because the deed was done here. It was done right here on earth, amen. Hey, Jesus Christ became, hey, the Bible says uh, he humbled himself and came in the fashion of a man, amen. He thought it was robbery to be equal with God, but come down in the form and the fashion of man. The deed was done here. The place of salvation, good won't get you there because the deed was done here. And lastly, look in verse 8. It says, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, thou shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation what I'm trying to say is that place of salvation brother Wayne you know where yours is I know where mine is brother Norm you got it you got it in your head Hunter the place of salvation good won't get you there because the deed was done here but right here according to this scripture salvation is so near Salvation is so near. Salva he, look at what it says. It says, but what, verse 8, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee. Look, hey, salvation is near. Amen. They, those people, I, I know so many times, they come into this church, and I know they're lost, and they know they're lost, and everybody else knows they're lost. And they'll sit up under the, the anointing singing about Jesus Christ dying on the Calvary. Hey, they'll, they'll, hey, victory in Jesus can be sung. Hey, they'll, the, the anointing will come down and uh, the singers will cry because they know about And these people can sit right there and salvation is in this place. It's a moving around. Hey, uh, 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 someone can get up and read the word of God and the word of God will not return void. And salvation can be right here and it can move down their pew and it can stand right beside them and they're near to the place of salvation. Salvation, good won't get you there to that place because the deed was done here. But salvation is so near. God said, draw nigh to me and I'll draw nigh unto thee. That's what he said. By, hey, for us that are saved, Romans 13, verse 11 said, our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. Right. I'm talking about salvation is so near according to this scripture. And tonight, I don't know about you and where you're at in your life, but if you're lost, salvation's near. It's just one step away for you. Can I tell you about a man that was so close to salvation? that he would kiss him on the cheek. 
that he would leave this world lost, undone, and he was in hell today. And he was so near to salvation. If you need to be saved, Brother Hunter's going to get us a song. If you need to be saved tonight, I know it's Wednesday night. And I know you didn't come for all this. But if God has spoke to your heart tonight, and you've been trying to do good, but you know you're not saved, and you're, you, 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 you're, you're wanting to go to heaven, salvation's close tonight. Amen. Even on a Wednesday night, even on a business meeting night, hey, even, 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 even now, salvation is close if you need to be saved tonight. As he prepares to sing this song and we stand all over the house of the Lord, if you need to be saved, why don't you come tonight? Salvation is near. You've been trying to do good, well then quit. Quit. I, I don't mean not do good when you get saved. Oh, that's a whole nother sermon. I mean if you're lost tonight and you're trying to do good, it ain't going to work. If you're trying to turn over a new leaf, it ain't going to work. That's your righteousness. That's the filthy rags. But if you trust in Jesus Christ, salvation is near. It's near this morning. And as they prepare to sing this song, if you need to come tonight, why don't you come tonight? God, there's a place of salvation. If you don't know it tonight, you can find your place and let Jesus Christ come into your life. It's a good thing to be saved, I tell you. I lived on both sides. I know what I'm talking about. And it's a good thing to be saved. So good to see you in the house of the Lord tonight. And uh, we've got a lot of announcements. We've got a lot of things. Because they're going to try to raise some money to go on a trip. Amen. And, 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 uh, and they were talking and they said, you know, the church is supposed to go on a trip. And I got a report that the teenagers in this church said, we want to work for our trip. And so they're going to do this for us. That excites me. Amen. And so put this on your schedule. That'll be February the 4th, next Saturday. And uh, any other information, Brother Al? Sign-up sheets right there in the foyer. Please sign up for this. Uh, uh, maybe uh, what it is you're going to go to church on Saturday night. Thirty dollars a couple. February 18th, remember this, and also the state meeting, things are coming together for the state meeting, amen, thank you for all that's all over here at Hudson Road, and the volunteers, if you have not done that yet, please get up with me or one of the deacons, we need to get you signed up, get your name wrote down, amen, 
for this. All right, any other seniors will be this coming Tuesday. Ten thirty, leave a message. Okay, next Tuesday. All right. Any other announcements? Amen. If no other announcements, uh, we do have our uh, regular quarterly business meeting right after service tonight. I am a member. If you're not a member, you can certainly stay and sit in with no voting rights. At this time, we will dismiss this service.